going to be demonstrating card number three featuring the Stampin' Blends vellum technique. So if you've watched my last two videos where I have showcased this technique, I showed you three different ways I've been using this technique. So I know many of you are waiting for card number three. So this is card number three. And this was funny how this came about. I was using the technique one night and this was a mistake. And I'm like, oh my gosh, I ruined it. Didn't know if I was going to throw it away or not, but decided to just leave it. And the next morning I came in and picked it up and created this card. So sometimes our mistakes turn out pretty nice and I ended up loving it. This is my favorite. So I'm going to show you how I made this card so you can make one at home yourself. So let's get started. This is the third card that I created using the Stampin' Blends and Vellum Technique. And I have really been looking forward to sharing this with you guys. And I am just going to jump right on in. So my card base is basic white, measures 8.5 by 5.5, scored at 4 and a quarter. So I'm going to set that aside. And then I just have another piece of basic white. This is going to be for the front part of the card. And then I'm actually going to use two pieces of vellum. So this piece measures four by five and a quarter. This is the piece that is going to get layered on top of the card base. And then I have another piece of vellum uh, also for the stamp and blend technique, but I'm going to use some different colors and this is going to be for the flowers. So I am going to start with my stamping on this piece. This is a stamp set that's retiring. It's called Swirly Frames. And I think this may have been a bit of a sleeper. I'm not sure if many people noticed this stamp set and it is retiring. Did I mention that already? I love this stamp set. And so this is only available until May 3rd. Now, we have some gorgeous new dies coming out in our new Stampin' Up! catalog on May the 4th. These dies actually coordinate with color and contour, so you can get this as a bundle. So these dies are called Scallop Contour Dies. And I'm telling you, these work so nice with this stamp set. So that's what I'm using on this card and I already have this on a block. So I'm going to stamp with my crumb cake. I'm just gonna stamp that right onto my basic white. And then look, this lines up so perfect. I'm gonna cut this out on my machine. I'll be right back. So look at that, you guys. Is that not the perfect stamp set for these new dies coming out? I love it. So of course there's the circles and uh, the different the different uh, images in here. So if you want this stamp set to use with our new dies coming out, you really need to get this before they're gone on May 3rd. So while I have my crumb cake out, I'm gonna stamp my sentiment and I'm using another retiring stamp set. This is called So Much Love and I'm going to stamp So Much Love for you. Actually, before I do that stamping, I'm going to bring in um, a couple of new in colors. These are from our 2021-2023 in color collection, Pale Papaya and Polished Pink. And I want to actually add some color to the background before I stamp my sentiment. So I'm taking my blending brush and picking up some pale papaya and I'm just going to add some color right in the center okay maybe a little bit more over here I'm gonna do the same thing now with some polished pink I'm gonna use the same brush and I'm dabbing it off on my scrap paper first just so that I don't get a big blob of color and just adding some of that pink so I still have the white on there but I also now have that beautiful pale papaya and polished pink on there too so this is the part where you have to determine if your card is going to be portrait or landscape which will be which will determine um, where you're gonna put your your sentiment of course I'm going to make this card landscape just like the original so I'm going to bring in my crumb cake, stamp my sentiment right up there, and then I'm going to take my another blending brush in the crumb cake, 
and I'm just going to go right around the edge of this die cut just kind of making it look vintagey and pretty all right guys that is the stamping done for the front of the card. So I'm gonna set this aside. Now it's time for the technique. So I'm using the Pale Papaya and Polished Pink Stampin' Blends, I'm, and these are both in dark. I'm also using our uh, new Fresh Freesia, which is also part of the new In Color Collection. This is Light, um, Dark Bermuda Bay, and Dark Old Olive. So if you haven't seen my last two videos where I uh, do this stamp and blend vellum technique, you're going to love this. This is so cool. So I'm just scrubbling, scrubbing, scribbling on my color. So it's my pale papaya. And let's go in with my fresh freesia. some polished pink and I'm just kind of going in the little areas that don't already have color okay I love the pops of blue on this background technique so this is the Bermuda Bay Okey and then the last color is my old olive All right, I think we're good. Now you can use our wide uh, water painter and I know some people prefer that, but I really like using my scruffy old paintbrush. In fact, I think this has um, dried glue on it, <laughs> but I'm really glad I haven't tossed it because I really, really love using this for this technique. So I'm bringing in my glass dish and I'm using 99% rubbing alcohol so um, anything you know 91% will work but 70% will not work very well so uh, I just got this at the drugstore um, and this works super super good so I'm just going to pick up some of that rubbing alcohol and then just dab it on and the reason why I prefer using this as opposed to my um, my wide brush is I find that, I don't know, personally for me, it just kind of moves the colors together differently. Whereas when I can pounce like this and let that brush kind of spread out, um, I don't know, I just, I like the look that I get. So there are all kinds of tutorials right now um, that you can Google or YouTube with uh, lots of demonstrators and non-demonstrators alike using this technique. And you can see the beautiful ways they're all creating their projects using this technique. So this is just, this is just the way I like to do it. And you can kind of spread those colors around if you see like it's a bit of a blank spot in here you can kind of pull that color in and then what I like to do is I like to use my heat tool to quickly speed up the drying so I'm gonna pull in some white so you can see how pretty that is when you put it on the white it just pops absolutely beautiful Okay, so I'm going to bring in this piece now and for this one I'm just going to use some pale papaya and um, we're going to use the dark polished pink and you know what maybe I'll use a little bit of that fresh freesia as well. So this piece is going to be what I'm going to stamp and cut my flowers out with. So it's a bit bigger um, piece than my four by five and a quarter, but that's because I want to get more flowers out of it. Whereas this piece is going to get glued directly onto my card base. Alrighty, let's do the magic. I 
find with this scruffy brush, as I'm pushing down, those bristles are spreading out and that makes a difference in the pattern as well. And you can kind of pull some of that color in again, like I had mentioned. All right, let me heat that up. So put it behind the white and you can see those beautiful colors coming through. Absolutely gorgeous. So let me show you what I'm going to do next. I'm going to take my embossing buddy and I'm going to go over the entire piece. And then I'm taking my flower image from the So Much Love stamp set and I'm going to ink this with my first mark. And I always like to use my piercing mat underneath my stamps. Okay, so there's one. I'm going to stamp another one. I'm going to stamp it this way. I'm going to take the smaller flower as well because I can squeeze that on. squeeze that on right there okay I am going to emboss the first one with white powder just in case you're wondering this measures four and a half by six and a half so I'll sprinkle on my white powder on the bottom flower And I'm going to use gold powder on the other two flowers. Spin that around. Okie doke. And I'm going to sap those with the heat tool. So pretty with the embossing. So now I'm going to flip this over. This is the side that I use the stamp and blends on the alcohol. And I'm just going to take my garden, or sorry, my old olive stamp and blend, and I'm just going to color inside the leaves. I am also going to take my pale papaya and go on those tiny little buds just because I kind of want those to be solid. And same thing on these ones. And I'm going to take my dark polished pink and add some color to those tips of the buds. I cut these out they are going to be absolutely stunning and what I'm going to do is I'm actually just going to squeeze some liquid glue right on top of that not not tons but enough bring in my silicone craft mat and I just have a piece of Stampin' sponge and I'm just going to dab that glue around and then adhere this to my basic white cardstock. And I'm going to do the whole piece of vellum. Um, that way any little bits that I don't cut out like with the flower, I can still use for tiny little uh, butterflies or anything at all. And then I'm not wasting anything. You could use the adhesive sheets as well, which is what I've shown in my other videos. Okay. So now I have a piece of my basic white and I'm just going to glue this right onto that cardstock. And now my flowers are ready to cut out. So here are the gorgeous roses all cut with that beautiful technique coming through the petals. 
Um, that was embossed in the gold, of course. Here's the other one embossed in the gold. And the one embossed in the white. So, I am now going to bring this piece back in. And what I am going to do is I am going to run it through my painted texture embossing folder. So I now have the texture on here and I did this in the last video and what I did on this piece um, on this card is I took my crumb cake ink pad and I was just playing around not really sure how how this would work but I just lightly swiped it across the vellum so it's picking up the uh, design of the embossing folder And I'm doing it to both sides. And when I first did this, I thought, you know what? I think I just ruined it. And I sat it down for the night. I was going to throw it away. And the next morning I came in and I looked at it and I thought, you know what? That's actually really beautiful. I'm going to use that on a card. So this was a happy accident. So this is what it looks like on the card with that beautiful, um, stamp and blend technique and the texture and the crumb cake. Now what I'm going to do before I glue this to my card is I'm going to bring these dies back in. This is the die that I, this one here, hang on, this was the die that I used to um, to cut out this piece. So I'm going one size down and I'm going to run this through my machine like this and cut this out because this is going to get covered with this piece and to me that's a waste when I've got such a beautiful background that I can use on another card. So the thing is, is because I'm running this through the um, die cutting machine a second time, it's going to flatten down the raised areas that I just got by adding that texture with the embossing folder. But the cool thing is, is it will keep the design of that embossing folder on my vellum. Okay, so now I have this piece for another project. And then this piece is going to go on my card front. So I'm going to bring in my silicone craft mat again and my glue. And I'm going to take I'm going to take my sponge and just dab glue on those edges. Now I'm going to put this onto my card base. I'm going to glue this on as well. This is going to go this way and put that on and look how absolutely beautiful that is with that crumb cake background and I'm so happy I have another piece saved that would have been lost underneath this so I can absolutely use this for another project. Now I've actually gone ahead and um, pre-cut some die cuts. So this is vellum that I cut with the flourishing um, greenery that corresponds with the Forever Fern stamp set. I have cut these pieces out with vellum and I just took my blending brush and um, added ink. So they're old olive. This one actually is just Bermuda Bay. I just wanted a tiny bit of color and um, I'm going to use those on the card also. I also have a piece of ribbon and I swiped the pale papaya and polished pink across to, to dye it. And I have a little tiny scrap of pale papaya cardstock that I've just flagged. And I'm going to use those on the card too. And then from the Butterfly Gala stamp set and coordinating punch, which is retiring, I have made a butterfly. And I just used my Stampin' Write markers to color that because I've embossed it. Whoops, come here little guy. I embossed it in gold and the Stampin' Blends don't work really well when you color on something that's embossed. So I use the stamp and write markers to um, color that little butterfly. So I am going to use a gold one on this card. Actually that's the bigger one and the smaller one. I only want to use one. Use the big one. I'm going to put that there. So I have one of our square doilies here and I want to also put this on the card just to add a little bit of something something. 
and I am going right on top of this with my person mark and I'm going to emboss this with white. I'm just going to give that a moment to cool and I missed a little bit in the middle but that's okay because generally that part's going to be covered anyways. Pop out a couple of those bits there. So this is going to stand out on my card more than it would have if I had just kept it the plain vellum. So what I am going to do is I'm just going to cut off a little bit just random and just kind of position it on I think like that let's see yeah see that just adds a little something something behind it so I'm going to take a little bit of my glue a little dabble do you And actually, before I put that on, I'm going to go ahead and add some of this greenery. So I'm just going to put a couple little dabs here and there. And position that on so that I don't hide my sentiments. But this long bit can go underneath my flowers. I'm just going to hold that in place for a moment. Oh! and this piece and then I'll tuck some more of these die cuts um, underneath once I have my flower in place With the vellum you kind of do have to hold it down for a few minutes not even a few minutes just a few seconds okay let's put this on now And I'm going to put that on like so. Let me zoom in for you guys. What else? We've got more greenery and I might not need it all. So I just have a little bit. I'm going to tuck. Oops. You want to make sure it doesn't go past your card edge too much. Otherwise it's not going to fit in the envelope very well. Put that one there. I don't want to hide all that doily I put down either. Coming together, almost done. All right, so grab my little butterfly. A little bit of glue. I'm going to put my butterfly here. I love these little butterflies. I love our beautiful, um, or sorry, Butterfly Brilliance butterfly collection, but we don't have little itty bitty tiny butterflies like this one. So this is why I pulled out my Butterfly Gala stamp set and punch. And again, that's retiring. So the Butterfly Gala stamp set's retiring, the So Much Love is retiring, and the Swirly Frames. So you do want to grab those things before they're gone. Um, May 3rd is the last day you can order them. What am I missing? I'm missing my pearls. So I'm going to bring in my pearls and my pale papaya. So I'm going to grab my dark papaya. Now I've been coloring my pearls in with the in with the uh, polished pink but let's see what this will look like this might be too late we'll, we'll try it I'm uh, coloring five pearls no I think this is gonna look pretty these are gonna look pretty all right oh you know what we forgot we forgot the ribbon Oh, see, and now, like, I wanted that underneath. 
heaven's sakes. See, that was going to go like that. And this was going to go like that. But, and I was going to put some greenery on top. But you know what? That's all Tay. I can save those for the next card. There it is. All finished and looking beautiful. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to bring in the So Much Love and these little dots, which make really fun backgrounds. I'm going to take my crumb cake and then just dab a little here and dab a little there. But I don't want it to be too dark, so I'm going to stamp off first. Stamp off twice, actually. And stamp on. Maybe a little bit over here. See, that just kind of fills it in nicely. What do you think? Didn't it turn out pretty? So happy with that. And I forgot my rhinestones. Rhinestones. I find these rhinestones really brighten this card up even more. Just pop it up. So there is my finished card. And I'm so pleased with how it turned out. And then here was the very first one that I made. The sentiment is from Grace's Garden, also retiring. You can see where I added that little bit of ribbon and that little bit of pale papaya. Just adds a little something something, but I don't think it's a big deal that I didn't put it on this card, but I do I do quite like that. Plus it adds a little bit of texture. Um, the flower, as you can see, is darker, and that's because I used, um, I believe I used pumpkin pie and Rococo Rose, maybe a little bit of um, real red. And I also embossed the doily in silver instead of the white. And the flower, of course, is embossed in the white instead of the gold. Now, earlier today, I filmed this entire video only to discover <laughs> it didn't save. So this video is a whole redo. Here's the one that I did earlier today and exactly the same way I just did it in portrait. So that is a fun, fun, beautiful card. And you can see all that gorgeous um, background with the Stampin' Blends and that really cool um, rubbing alcohol technique so pleased with how these cards have turned out so I have been having so much fun with this technique uh, yesterday I actually went through and um, I did four full eight and a half by eleven sheets um, of vellum with this stamp and blend rubbing alcohol technique. So now all I have to do is just cut them up and put them on my cards. So you can see how pretty they looked. And if I want to run them through my embossing folders, I can, like I did for card number two. If I want to add the gold leafing, I can. So I am just having the best time with this technique. Um, you do need to use alcohol ink um, markers. Uh, for this technique, it has to be alcohol ink. That's how the rubbing alcohol uh, reacts and makes everything move around. So our stamp and write markers won't work. Uh, I know somebody asked about Sharpie markers. I don't know. I haven't tried it. I don't have different Sharpie markers to try. I just have our Stampin' Up! ones. But I do know our Stampin' Up! ones work amazing with this technique. If you missed my previous videos using this technique, this was card number one. And I used the beautiful uh, tree die cuts on that. And then card number two. And this is where I use the embossing folder and the um, gold gilded leafing on top of the technique. And also behind the stamp here. And then, of course, card number three. So 
If you haven't given this technique a try, what are you waiting for? It's pretty awesome. You're going to love it and you're going to have the best time creating. Thank you so much for watching. I appreciate you so much. I know I say that every time, but it's very, very true. And uh, if you haven't already, please hit that subscribe button and the little thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Take care, stay safe, and happy stamping.